Hi, I'm Irving. Welcome to Cato and Miss Case. Don't say it. As a publisher, you have my assurance the Sentinel will give full cooperation on your charity drive. I told you it was about Miss Case. A special bulletin on the radio interrupts their conversation. An unidentified flying object has reportedly crashed and burned in a field some two miles outside the city limits. Cato, First report quickly. coming in, state eyewitnesses cited the object flying due east just before it crashed. Who's on the city desk? More detail I... on the spot. Get him on the phone. We switch over to our mobile unit at the Trouble? scene of the crash. Sounds like it. He and Casey start burning up the phone, getting reporters and others to where the action is. Rumors of an alien invasion are already taking hold and people are starting to flee the city, jamming up all the highways. Time to go take a look for ourselves. Bring the car around front. Get Scanlon. Or not. I don't think that's his late dinner date. Definitely not his dinner date. They have cheap costumes and a taser, it looks like. What do they want? Good evening, Mr. Reed. Invading aliens crash and burn on Earth. Half a dozen or so of them escape the burning wreckage, so naturally they go straight to Britt Reed's house, and naturally they speak American English. You're an extremely lovely young woman, my dear. I hope we will have mutually pleasant memories of our meeting. He's a space alien who's crash-landed on Earth, and the first thing he does is hit on Miss Case. Right. Who are you? We're wayfarers, Mr. Reed. Wayfarers on an interrupted journey. And what we want is your complete cooperation. To do what? You don't expect us to believe that you're visitors from outer space. I not only expect you to believe it, I insist upon it. Even though it's obvious I'm a dorky human in an even dorkier costume, I insist that you believe my scam. What do they want from Britt Reed? Your television station. You are going to tell your fellow citizens to leave us alone. He don't know humans very well, do he? All we want is safe passage out of the city to some unpopulated area where one of our sister ships can land and pick us up. So there are other ships up there. This is presumably our first truly verified, sort of, contact with an alien race, and they don't want us to be curious or try to meet them. What's wrong with this picture? If Brit doesn't comply, the sister ships will destroy the city, complete with Brit's television station that they need so badly. I'm not sure they thought this through. He keeps the TV camera in his living room just in case aliens pop in. Or a date is going super well. This is Britt Reed, publisher of the Daily Sentinel and general manager of DSTV. Here's a special announcement. There's no evidence that the city is in any danger. The only danger is from our own panic. I urge all citizens to remain calm. There's no reason to leave the safety of your homes. I repeat, do not leave your homes. You know that's not going to be the end of it. What else does he want? Call the authorities. Tell them I want secondary route 210 outside the city and highway 7W and 18 cleared of all traffic for a distance of 15 miles both east and west. In Wonder Woman, when the Skrill come to Earth, they don't understand anything about our culture, our climate, our units of measurement, or any of the rest. This guy knows the designations of specific highways and how long a mile is, not to mention what traffic is. If he's a space alien, then so is Sir Nitpick. Ahem. Not now. Brick tells Casey to get Scanlon on the line. All this time, the woman, she's Vama, she just calls him leader, is watching Cato, ready to shock him again. He's not about to try anything. Mr. Scanlon, no police, no traps. I want those roads cleared exactly as I ordered. Don't make me prove I'm telling the truth. Oh, and there's one other thing. We'll take you with us, my dear. The slightest deviation from my request, and you'll never see this charming young lady again. He's tired of Vama and wants a new main squeeze. Later, he has to explain to her that his alien genitalia is internal, so all he can do is sit there and look at her. Vama shocks both Brit and Cato into unconsciousness, and the aliens depart. <laughs> Thank you.
Before they went to Britt Reed's house, they stole a car, I guess. They pull up to a place and take Miss Case inside. Please sit down, Miss Case. Anything? No signal yet. They'll be on time. They always are. Yeah, aliens. Even in 1966, nobody would have bought the idea that they were really aliens in those absurd get-ups. So I suspect Britt and Cato already know they're fakes. But that taser of Vamas is very real. They know that for certain. They're so caught up in bureaucracy, they wouldn't dare be late. Dude, leave the hat on. Why are you masquerading as space people? There was a time in my life when I sought the answers to questions most men never even dream of. But then I made the eternally fatal mistake of being ahead of my time. Power, in this case. Power is what I found. Soon now I shall become a god. With the power of life and death in the palm of my hand. I'm glad he cleared that up. Reed and Cato wake up just as Scanlon arrives. They're ready to break out the Black Beauty and go after Casey. I just had word from the Air Force that they're sending a load of top-secret electronic equipment through this area within the hour. And that includes an H-bomb missile warhead. You know what route the truck is taking? The same one we've just cleared. But I would assume that the Air Force has at least half a billion guards around that shipment, which should be more than enough to take care of these clowns. The leader. Ten years ago, I covered a story. He was booted out of the atomic energy program for conducting unauthorized nuclear tests. Suddenly, Britt recognizes him? Why didn't he say anything when the guy was in his house? He could have undermined this whole thing. He destroyed a multi-million dollar test center. Two lab assistants were killed. Well, he must have found out about the shipment, and for whatever reason, he's after the H-bomb. You think? I'd call that power all right. And since it's obvious he's also a little crazy, there's a fair to middling chance he'd use it under the right circumstances. Mabuse. That's the leader, Dr. Eric Mabuse. If he gets the H-bomb, what are the chances of it exploding? The warheads are never transported with the detonators on board. But it would be easy for a scientist like Mabuse to make one. At least now we have a name for him. The convoy carrying the bomb gets a radio call. Air Force convoy. Air Force convoy. You can't beat this modern equipment. I'm having trouble with these Air Force guys. They're carrying a nuclear bomb, but they act as bored as if they were hauling pumpkins to market. If they know what they're transporting, maybe they should stay a little more alert and be a little more suspicious when the radio does that. Ten years ago, I offered them communications channels that couldn't be jammed. A fool and his bomb are soon parted. Told you. Casey finally finds a moment when nobody is looking at her. The scanner signal. Casey, switch over to high beam. We'll try and track her on the oscilloscope. That's not what an oscilloscope does, but do it anyway. A henchman comes in with the detonator for Mabuse to inspect before they attach it to the bomb. Clever. The tracker will lead them to the bomb and the detonator so they can deal with the main threat. Radar reports that the truck and its escort vehicle are coming sooner than expected, which will throw their timetable off. Mabuse says we'll just have to deal. He explains to Casey that he's hijacking a hydrogen bomb, has a detonator, and his finger is on the button. He intends to drop it, he just hasn't said where yet. Come now, Miss Case. I insist you join me. I told you this was the Miss Case show. The goons head out after her with orders to kill. Up the road! It was only the trans-oscillator, no problem. What's a trans-oscillator or two? We don't even know what it does, so it's no big loss. Come on. Okay, there may be a small problem or two. They jump in another car and go after her. Now she and they are on a collision course with the Green Hornet.
There she goes. Just think, if she'd grabbed the other car, they'd be in the one with the blown tire and she'd be getting away. She takes off cross country with the four aluminum foil guys in hot pursuit. The one still has the tracker on him, so the green hornet goes after it on foot. He leaves Cato behind, which is never a good move. She appeals to a homeless man for help, but he sees the fake aliens and takes off running. There's nowhere else to go. He's got her. Let's go. It's the green hornet! He's going into the incinerator! This is a two-part story. Is this our cliffhanger? Let it burn! Come on! Turn the belt off. Turn the belt off. Turn the belt off. Turn the belt off. Why am I not surprised that Cato had the good sense to turn the belt off? Meanwhile, back at the Air Force convoy... What? Vama shocks the guards unconscious while the officer in charge wonders what's going on. Before you do anything foolish, Major, I must warn you. I've armed the warhead. If you make any move to defend yourselves, I shall blow us all to kingdom come. If I press this button, the device on the side of your truck will detonate the warhead. At this range, it'll destroy the whole city. And we have our cliffhanger, a crazy guy with an armed nuclear warhead and the right button to push. The Green Hornet and Cato couldn't protect the warhead because they had to save Casey. And the Air Force's idea of a convoy to protect a nuclear warhead is two guys in a car. Just knowing that, I feel safer already, don't you? Until next time.